welcome to my youtube channel mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials in this video i am talking about a uh, testings of the material so basically that will be the important part in the field of engineering if that will be the any kind of engineering the testings of the material and that will be the essential parts so basically testings of the material that will be you can say destructive kind of testings and non destructive kind of testings so in this video i am talking about need of the testings then some of the difference it will be for the destructive testings and non destructive testings some of the objectives of the non destructive testings and basically talking about the initial and basic requirement of the non destructive testings for the die penetration testing so which will be having a maximum applications in the field of an engineering to identifying the different kind of properties it will be present into the materials so let us start with our topics need of the testings of material so in which basically the material testing is carried out for a number of purpose to select an appropriate material for a particular applications so in the field of engineering each and every engineering applications that will be having a different kind of materials so materials like ferrous non ferrous or you can say sometimes it will be the ceramics and the essential part is that and that material it will be used according to my application or not so the testing is a essential part for selection of the proper materials so that will be enhancing the performance of the applications so it involves the comparison of the behavior of the test pieces under the conditions which are approximately similar to those condition in which material is used improvement in a quality level increase and reliability and in terms of the increasing the safety of the machines so by the testings of the material we are increasing the safety of the machines then to identifying the different properties which will be present into the materials and the properties generally as per my requirement of the applications so different material having a different kind of properties so that need to be identifying the properties of the materials to identifying the defects or you can say irregularities into the structure because that structure it will be directly proportional to the properties of the material and properties of the material that will be according to the requirement of the applications so basically in case of testing that all are have to identifying the properties whether our selected material that will be as per the application or not so the checking is a essential part or you can say testing is an essential part in the field of any engineering so basically testings of the material that will be dividing into two categories destructive kind of testings and non destructive kind of testings so in which destructing testing material is destroyed in the test and can't be used any more after the test so that will be considering as a wastage material in case of destructive testings in the case of non destructive testings material is not destroyed and you can evaluate or identifying the different properties and that will be used after the test so that will be give the 100% ensurement regarding to the performance and the properties of the materials measurement of the test are direct and reliable in case of the destructive testings but with the non destructive testing measurement of these tests are indirect and reliability has to be verified so after making the testings by the non destructive testings it should be verified more time is required for the destructive testing so preparation time is essential you have to do some machining on to that particular components for the testings of the materials in case of non destructive testings little preparation is required for the non destructive testings 
preparation of test specimen is costly because of the sum of the machining are required to converting into desired shape and size for the destructive testings but in case of non destructive testings the testings of the components during the operation is possible where the testings of the component during the operation is not possible because that will be destroyed your components the obtained results are a quantitative in case of destructive testings because that will be basically be depends upon the sampling techniques of the materials so one piece of your thousands number of the parts and that will be selected so all the materials that will be selected so the data obtained from the result are qualitative so in case of non destructive testing you should measure each and every components of the manufacturing system and the rejected component it will be separate out so only the which component is selected that will be having a appropriate property as per my requirements so in case of non destructive testings that will be give the 100% ensuring regarding to the performance regarding to the safety and regarding to the my requirements of the materials so in destructive testing you can considering as a tensile test and for the non destructive testings that will be your penetration testing radiography testing ultrasonic testings and magnetic particle testings some of the objectives of the non destructive testings and it will be as follow to find out whether the material is suitable for requirement or not or our raw material is as per my requirement or not so that will be the requirement of the non destructive testings to determine the fundamental properties of the material to access the operations and time involved into the fabrications so which kind of manufacturing process is being carried out to make your finished product so that will be find with the help of non destructive testings to record the data for the group of the metals and alloys for the design purpose to check whether proper heat treatment process is given to an alloy or metal so which kind of heat treatment process that will be carried out to making a component or to enhancing the properties of the particular components so there are different kind of heat treatment process like annealing normalizing hardening so whether it will be done in a proper way or not so that should be checked by the non destructive testings to investigate into the defects or you can say irregularities and flaws of the material so as to improve the manufacturing techniques so that all are the objectives of the non destructive testings now i am talking about the principle of the dye penetration testing so in this video i am only talking about the dye penetration testing because this method it will be having a wide application in the field of engineering so basically dye penetration test it will be applicable to each and every ferrous non ferrous ceramics plastics every kind of materials but the limitation with respect to the measurement of the defects so this method is only applicable to identifying the surface defect it will be present into the materials some of the principle of the dye penetration testing so generally that will be based upon the capillary action where low surface tension fluid penetrates into clean and dry surface breaking discontinuities so penetrant may be applied to the raised component by the clipping spraying or by the application of brushing after the adequate penetration time has been allowed the excess penetration is removed and a developer is applied so these all are the basic process and finally the developer helps to draw penetrant out of the flows where a visible indications become visible to the inspector or observer so the inspection is performed under the ultraviolet or you can say white light so here you can see the figure that will be the dye penetration kit which will be including the cleaner penetrant and developer 
so that will be used to identifying the surface defects onto the any kind of materials like ceramics ferrous non ferrous plastic etc so different steps is involved before the starting of the inspection so first steps that will be the preparation and pre cleaning of the surface so with the application of cleaner in from the dpt kit so with the help the test surface is clean to remove any dirt paint oil grease or any loose scales so it may be include solvents alkaline cleaning steps etc so just you can see with the application of brush you should clean your surface so that will be help to identifying the different kind of irregularities onto the top surface of your materials so after that second step application of the penetrant so with the application of penetrant generally that will be in the red colors so with the application of the spray brush you should apply on to that particular clean surface so the penetrant can be applied to the object to be tested by spraying brush flooding or immersion in order to minimize the moisture entering into the defects or discontinuities the temperature of the test surface shall generally within the range of the 10 degree to 50 degree centigrade so after some time or you can say 50 15 to 20 minutes so that liquid penetrant it will be penetrated into that particular irregularities or the cracks as shown into the figures after some time the third steps and that will be the excess penetrant removal so now with the application of the cotton clothes or some water solvent that should be removed so the excess penetrance is then removed from the surface the removal method is controlled by the type of the penetrant used so that will be water solvent or you can say oil base hydrophilic water dilutable emulsifier so that surface it need to be clean so only the penetrant is present inside of the cracks so first the excess water washable penetrant shall be removed with the water subsequently cleaning with a clean lint free cloth lightly moistened with the solvent shall be then carried out so the fluorescent penetrant this shall carried out under a ultraviolet is source then the four steps for the dye penetration test and that will be the application of the developers so after the removal of the excess penetrant a white developer is applied to the sample so non aqueous wet developer dry powder water suspendable and water soluble the choice of the developer is governed by the penetrant capabilities and by the inspection conditions so after 15 to 20 minutes by application of the developer it will be go for the inspection steps so fifth number that will be the inspection it will be carried out on to the components so in that the inspector will be use visible light adequate intensity for the visible dye penetrant ultraviolet radiation of the adequate intensity along with the low ambient light levels for the fluorescent penetrant examinations so with the application of, of the presence of the ultraviolet rate that developer it will be reacted with the penetrant and it will be change the color code on to the top surface of your material you can see into the figures so you easily identifying the different kind of cracks if it will be present on to the top surface of your any kind of materials like uh, ceramics ferrous non ferrous so you can easily identifying the irregularities or cracks so the inspection of the test surface should take place after 10 minutes development type this time delay allows the bloating actions to occurs final step of the dye penetration test and that will be the post cleaning is required the test surface is often clean after the inspections and recording or defects especially if post inspection coating process are scheduled so some of the advantages or you can say the features of the dye penetration testing as under so the defect 
identification has a high visual contrast then the developer draws the penetrant out of the flow over a wider area than the rein flows so it looks wider limited training is required for the operators although the experience is quite valuable so less skill is required for operating or gains identifying the cracks with the help of dye penetration testings low testing cost so wide applications in the field of engineering to identifying the surface defects of any kind of materials is being used for different applications proper cleaning is necessary to assure that the surface contaminants have been removed and any defects presents are clean and dry so penetrant dyes stain clothes skin and the other porous surface brought into the contact so major advantages of this process is that will be applicable to any materials but limitation with respect to the it will be only measure the subsurface defects so it will be difficult to identifying the subsurface defects and this method is not applicable for the porous structural materials because with the help of capillary actions it will be penetrate into each and every part of the component so that will be having a difficulties for the porous materials so the maximum applications for identifying the surface defects into for any kind of materials so thank you very much if you like that so subscribe share and like mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials